Hello, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table, we're gonna be talking about these. The DJI Smart Battery for the Phantom 2, the Phantom Vision and the Phantom Vision Plus. Um, and specifically about the deep discharge um, routine that DJI recommend you, you do. A little bit about why they recommend that and, and how to do it, really, as I've had a couple of questions. Um, before we go any further, we need, a, we need a beverage, of course, to help us navigate such tricky uh, subjects. And um, this evening, I'm, um, I'm finishing off this um, very nice Australian number from the Seesaw S&M. Shiraz Morvedra from um, a blend from the Barossa Valley and the Hunter Valley in Australia. And uh, as with most things from Australia that are alcoholic, it's very good indeed. So cheers. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, smart batteries. This one, as you can see, is um, battery number one, which came with my original vision in October 2013 so it's um, it's quite long in the tooth and bears a few bears a few scars and a few insect remains by the look of it um, one of the things that the manual tells you to do uh, is to every 20 or so flights is to do a deep discharge on this down to about 8% or until it basically won't switch on anymore and I've had lots of questions because sort of getting a bit confused by this because people I kind of remembering the old um, NICAD batteries. You get used to getting rechargeable things, and how you had to kind of, you know, we have a memory effect, and so you had to do this kind of. If you kept just topping them up, they would get a memory effect and wouldn't wouldn't work. And people saying, but lipo batteries don't do that. What you know? Why this is nonsense. We don't need to do that. And it's true. The recommendation for doing that by DJI has got nothing to do with conditioning the chemistry in the battery, because lipos don't have memory effect. What it is to do with, though, is helping to, um, as far as I understand, is helping to calibrate the circuitry in there, the smart bit. And there's a couple of reasons why it would want to do that. First of all, as you know, when you plug it into the aircraft, it reports a percentage of juice that's left. Now, as you're probably aware, LiPo batteries, from the moment you start to use them, do gradually deteriorate, and they are, they are uh, unable to hold their full storage capacity and that reduces over time we've probably all seen that in our laptop batteries you may have even seen it when you plug this into the to the um, assistant you'll see that it says you know design capacity and current capacity and things like that and there will be a difference so 100 percent of a new battery is not going to be the same as 100 percent of a 18 month old battery uh, and so uh, one of the reasons why you would uh, discharge it down and recharge fully is to give the circuitry in here a chance to sort of calibrate where the battery's at and to make sure that it's giving you a as, as an accurate a percentage out reading as possible so that you know you've got 50% left of the life in this battery not 50% left of a much younger one which could give you a bit of a false idea of when you're going to run out so that's obviously um, something that it's important to do. Um, and I, my understanding is that's the main and only real reason why um, DJR recommended the, the getting it down every every 20 or so. It's to keep the circuit in there kind of on the ball as to what the condition is and the age and the capacity of your battery. Um, and I, I, I must admit, hands up here, I do not religiously do it every 20 flights because I kind of forget um, it, but I try and remember to do it when it's not gone much beyond 30. And because all my batteries are labelled, I know which one is which. Um, and you can kind of keep a bit of a track. It's a bit of a pain, to be honest, at the moment, because we have to plug into the assistant to see what, what it is. So what I do is I've just got a little bit of scrap of paper that's in the flight case. And I note down battery one, two flights that day and then I can have a, just a little running tally chart. Uh, I know other people who've designed spreadsheets and all sorts of clever stuff and you can even get apps that will track and other bits and pieces but for me scrap of paper works. Um, the other thing that people have asked is well how on earth do I discharge it? There's no magic button I can press and it will discharge itself down to a store or to a, 
uh, a low level, and that's true. Um, the quickest and most enjoyable way of doing it is to fly. Uh, last flight of the day, if you know your battery needs going, is just keep going um, until it, it, you can't get it to lift off anymore, and even you know, switch it on and off again, run it on the ground for a little while, and eventually it will come to a point where this thing will not start up the aircraft, and that's good enough. The other thing that I've done, you know, when we've had like, you know, I've charged it up, ready to go, I've been hit with bad weather, too windy to even go out and fly it off, is literally um, take the props off, put the aircraft somewhere out of the way, indoors, put this in, power up the battery, and just leave the aircraft sat there. Don't, there's no need to, you know, don't, whatever you do, um, arm the motors with the transmitter, in, just leave it, literally idling, and um, uh, I leave it overnight. And in the morning, it's usually just that drain is enough to have taken it straight down. Um, I do know people who kind of do arm the motors and run it at an idle revs with the props off <laughs> in the corner. Um, to be honest, it draws relatively little current at idle and you don't want to keep the motors running um, too fast without, the, you know, without the being outdoors and in the airflow and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, some people do that, but I, to be honest, I just run it down in those two ways. I fly it down or I actually, you know, just leave it switched on. Uh, some people I know have built a very simple circuit using a, uh, a car, a headlamp bulb or similar to plug this in, switch it on, draw a current. Um, that's a, that's probably a good way of doing it if you are electronics kind of focused and know what you're doing and can do it safely. Um, but that's the main one is just to fly it. Um, if you if you kind of keep a track of your batteries and you know that you've got one that should be discharged, you can even kind of just to make sure you carry that one with you, even if you weren't intending to fly. Just as I say, tap it in at the end of the day. Even just leave it on hover with a keeping your eye on it. That's the way to do it. So that's the reason why. Um, as I say, that's my understanding. If anyone knows about, I'm pretty almost hundred percent certain there's you know there's no chemical reason in terms of the battery chemistry why that is a good idea and in fact most people would turn around and say you really don't want to take lipo batteries down low much beyond 20 percent that often um every 20 to 30 cycles is probably okay um there we go hope that answered a couple of questions if anyone has got a more in-depth and technical knowledge please feel free to contribute down there i much appreciate your input um uh, but um that's it Thank you very much. I hope it was useful and interesting and I will see you again soon back on the kitchen table. But until then, cheers.